Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I probably should be out fishing today, but, you know, my heart's kind of heavy. I'm kind of depressed because of, of the state of this world. You know, I was watching TV. I'm not, I don't watch a lot of TV. My wife's more of a TV watcher than I am, but every once in a while I'll flick on the news just to see what condition the world's in, because I already know the world's in bad shape. I already automatically know this, that it's come to light to me that, you know, about all these police shootings here in the United States and this uh, uprisings with uh, Black Lives Matter. Well, I got news for you black folks. All lives matter. Indian lives matter. Chinese lives matter. White people matter. Humanity matters. You know? But I also understand the frustration that you folks are feeling in the inner cities. Did you hear me? In the concrete jungles. Okay, stop and think about this for a minute. When's the last time on the news have you ever heard of mass shootings in the state of Montana? Or Wyoming, or Idaho, or more of these isolated type states? Hardly ever. There's reasons for all this, ladies and gentlemen. I already know what I'm going to name this file here. I'm going to name this file our Angry Planet. Mother Earth is angry at the human race. Simple as this. We got a lot of factors going on that contribute to the hate that's going on in the world. I said the hate. First of all, Mankind has done a good job of destroying this planet. I've touched on this many times in my YouTube channel, but it is the God's truth. Climate change, ladies and gentlemen, is a fact, a scientific fact. The, the polar caps are melting. I know over the last 10, 15 years, I, I felt drastic changes in the weather out of the norm here in the state of Montana. But basically, us human beings have gotten away from spiritual, number one, spiritual principles. And no, I'm not here to preach at you. And no, I'm not here to bang a King James Version of the Bible over your head or the Quran or anything like that. But most people are too busy running around, you know, with their busy lives and, and, and like I say, living in the concrete jungle or whatever. That they, you know, they they don't give much thought to any of this kind of stuff. Well, when you're a guy like me and you've spent a lot of time outdoors and you've spent a lot of time in prayer and meditation trying to figure out what's went wrong with this earth, well, it start, the things start dawning on you after a while. I'm almost 65 years old and I'm a Vietnam veteran and lots of things have happened to me in my life that are very, very negative. You take like, oh, this happened 11 years ago, right here in this home of mine. I had six Livingston cops bust in this, come into my home. I was in my bedroom and I had one of them officers stick a firearm right in my face. Okay, are you Black Lives Matter people hearing this? You know, these are white guys, you know. And, and all I was doing that night, yeah, I got liquored up. I'll admit, but I was trying to get medical help for myself because I'm a Vietnam veteran and I suffer with PTSD and I, I got to drinking that night. So I went down to the local hospital to get some help or whatever have you. And before that night was over with, I ended up in jail and I ended up having to get me a lawyer that cost me 1500 bucks that I didn't have for some trumped up charges, which were BS and all that to get myself out of trouble. Now, let me tell you something here. These figures right here might be, on, just to show you how sick this world is, these are old figures. These were quoted to me by a Catholic priest in Sheridan, Wyoming, Fort McKenzie, when I was going through therapy. But as of, as, as of 1996, 150,000 Vietnam veterans had committed suicide and 250,000 Vietnam veterans have done hard time in prisons. Why is that? I'm going to tell you one of the biggest lessons I've learned in Vietnam. The enemy was ourselves. 
First of all, I was with Central Intelligence, and I, I, I can sit here and scare the crap out of a lot of people and say and tell a few things about that war that I happen to know that, number one, people probably wouldn't believe me, and number two, I don't think anybody gives a damn. In fact, I know you don't give a damn. The excuses that the government was given about us being involved in Vietnam was a big lie. I'll just, I'll just leave it at that. But the problem of it is, ladies and gentlemen, is we, we are going, I, I predict that we, as a, as a human race, this world probably, we probably, as a civilization across this globe, aren't going to be here in 300 years. The reason why I say that is because we're consuming, we're eating up Mother Earth faster than we're replenishing stuff. You see what I mean? We're consuming. Mother Nature, Mother Earth has only got so much to give. Personally, I believe that the air that we breathe is polluted, especially in the big cities. I believe that the processed food that we're eating is contaminated with all kinds of junk and genetically modified this and that and all this other stuff. And I know dang well, Flint, Michigan's a perfect example that the water supplies in you know, the United States and different parts of the world ain't so healthy. Okay, you got a bunch of human beings running around, hustle bustle, busy with their miserable little lives and like that and putting poison in their bodies. Now how in the hell are you supposed to be a kid that's jump jiving and wailing and doing stuff like that? Or dancing in the sunlight, so to speak. That's why on my YouTube channel, ladies and gentlemen, I concentrate on things like outdoor activities, fly fishing, anything I can think of to get people's minds, you know, geared more back to this earth where we came from, by the way, this earth where we came from, and get right back to the, the root of it all instead of hating each other. Because we got a system in place, ladies and gentlemen. We got a system in place that wants you to hate each other. You got too many people running around that their God is money. The love of money is the root of all evil. That's a spiritual principle and it is true. The love of money is the root of all evil. Okay, you got that going on. And then I believe that I don't care if you're black, you're white, you're Chinese, you're Mexican, I don't care who you are. If you're old, decrepit, uh, uh, disabled, whatever have you, this system that we live under wants to get rid of you. And there's another thing that you people might, you people that live in the big cities and whether or not, you might want to think about this. Sure, you've got a gripe, you've got a complaint, and I understand it. But creating riots and blocking highways and doing all this isn't the answer. And shooting cops or any of this stuff. You know, this is not the answer. Because I believe that there's a system in place that wants to control you. Because you've got a bunch of people in our government that make laws that make no sense whatsoever. And the problem of it is you got a poor cop out there. They jump into the service, you know, being a law officer, a law enforcement officer, and they, they most of them start out thinking that they're going to do good, but then they realize that they're involved in a crooked system. Simple as that. You know, they have to answer up to that. The, the county DA or a mayor or some crooked captain on the police force or something like that. I, I don't know if you folks realize this or not, but the average career span of most cops is only about five, six, seven, no more than 10 years, and they jump out of it. <laughs> because here in the United States, we got three parts of our government. For you people that need an American history lesson, you've got the legislative branch of the government, You've got the executive branch of the government, that would be Obama and his cohorts. And then you've got the judicial part, you know, the Supreme Court and all that. I'm sitting here to tell you 
in my humble opinion, the judicial system is what's really screwed up in this country. That, you know, like I say, they make laws that don't, they make laws to suit themselves, not to, not for the good, not for the good of the masses, so to speak. And, and, and so there you are. You know, we, personally myself, I, you know, I give testimony to this fact. I could never live in somewhere like New York City, Los Angeles, uh, uh, you know, Dallas, Texas, where these police shootings just happened and all that. And another thing I wanted to say is all this violence that people are creating on each other, what do you think this does for the terrorist mind? For the terrorist mindset? They're just sitting back there going like this. Good, good. And, and while we're trying to solve internal conflicts between ourselves when we should be helping each other, you know, love your neighbor as you love yourself. Well, the problem is with a lot of you people is you don't love yourself. You've lost your path. You never had a path to begin with. You got to get back down to your ruts, ladies and gentlemen. Back down to the, you know, the very earth that you stand on that supports your life. And I, I know that there's places like Detroit, Michigan, and places like that, that a guy like me, I've, I've seen this stuff on TV and I just shake my head. You know, the place looks like a friggin' war zone. Who wants to live there? You see what I'm getting at here? You know, and I, I can just hear some hater or some troller out there going, boy, this guy's really boring. No, it's because you're, you, my good friend, have been programmed to hate. You have been programmed to hate. Nobody on the face of this planet was born with hatred in their heart. This is something that's either been taught to you or learned or whatever have you. But I think that people are inherently healthy, unhealthy simply because the air, like I say, the air, the water, the, you know, the food, no, it's all contaminated and all gooped up. You know, yeah, okay, let me tell you this. I'm not even caring how long this video is going because this video has been a long time coming. I, I got this camera turned around. I can't even see the time on it. I don't even care. But about 15 years ago, 15 years ago, I, I went around and I realized that it seemed to me that people were getting angrier and angrier. And so I, every time I got into a group or a social situation, I'd always make a point to start up a conversation about, you know, what, what's going on with this world? How come this guy's like this? How come this situation happened? You know, like that. And most people, well, I don't know, Jim, it's just the way it is, and all that. Finally, I had a young friend of mine up in West Yellowstone. He's still up there. God bless you, Kevin. I, I won't drag your name into this. But I was talking to Kevin one day about the, the madness that's going on in this world. And he says, well, Jim, the way I look at it, he says, humanity is like an ant pile. He says, you know how you got, you know, ants have spent many, many days, weeks, months, whatever, have you building up, you know, they're, you know, protecting the queen ant and then building up the big nest and everything. And what happens when you come along and you kick that nest, that ant nest? They start getting mad and scurrying all over the top of each other and, and like that. You follow me? Well, somebody has came along and kicked the earth. Okay, there, there's a good, that about the best analogy that I could give you. Did you just hear me, or am I wasting my time here? You know, because I've spent a massive amount of time doing these YouTube videos. I'm all retired and everything. Why? Because of the Vietnam War, which I could get. I, I could make I don't know how many videos on, on that stupid thing, but I just soon forget it all. But but we as a nation and plain and simple, just, you know, well, while I'm thinking about it here for a second, because this is just a very, cat. this is unscripted. I'm doing this unscripted. I didn't even know what I was going to say, so you're going to have to forgive me if I kind of lose my train of thought. But I just know one thing. It took 9-11 to wake people up to what veterans actually do for, for, for the United States. Because 
I finally started getting a little bit of recognition and thanked a few times and stuff like that, you know, for being a Vietnam veteran. Because I can remember when I came back from Vietnam, my own family didn't even want to have much to do with me. Can you imagine that? And also, when I was fighting for my claim, it took me 10 years to, 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 to become an adjudicated veteran because the VA, uh, they proved beyond a shadow of a doubt that I suffered with PTSD. 10 years of fighting with them government lawyers up there in Washington. Here's that word law again. 10 years, and they even went as far as denying the fact that I was even in Vietnam, and I had two top security clearances and satellite communications. I had enough military security clearance on me to walk into the White House. They they really don't want, the powers to be, really don't want a guy like me making a video like this. You know, they don't. And it's only through the grace of God Almighty, I think, that I'm still alive. And having a good wife helped out too. I've been married for 40 years. Uh, there's lots of Vietnam veterans who've been married and divorced four, five, six times, alcohol problems and all that. I had my fair share of that, but I pretty much put the skids on heavy drinking back in 1996, but that's neither here nor there. But, but get, getting back to what I re what's really on my heart here is the fact that you people that are in these big cities, because it seems to me like all this unrest happens there, you got nowhere to go. You got nowhere to be free. You're in ghettos. You know, you don't get a chance to go out and catch a fish with a fly rod or, or whatever have you. And, and some of you people, you really need to get a better goal in your life and, and, and all that instead of being angry because by being angry, you're falling into the hands of these corrupt people because they want to segregate you from what they think is normal, from the rich people or whatever have you. You know, it, it, it's... There's a word that's escaping me now, but it's a, uh, it, 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 it's kind of a cleansing, an ethnic cleansing. And then and this, this ethnic cleansing or whatever have you, it, it doesn't make any difference if you're black, white, like I say, you know, it, it really doesn't. That's what I really believe is going on, you know, and, and. I, I just think that people have very unhealthy lifestyles. They don't have very many goals and all this kind of stuff like this. But I know one thing, you know, taking your anger out and one not have you on cops is really going the wrong way. You know, because cops, sooner or later, they find out about this system. And the way I do anymore with cops is I just don't, I don't, I don't get mixed up with them. I don't do anything that causes them to want to pull me over or, you know, I'm not involved in any kind of criminal activity or anything. And and I, I remind them real, real quick when I do have a conversation with a cop, just exactly who I am and all that other stuff. Because these cops up here in Montana, they don't play fair. Now you you people in the big city, you think you've got a problem with cops? You, you don't know jackass and shit. In the state of Montana, these cops can arrest you, throw your ass in jail without reading your Miranda rights. Did you hear me? That's a fact. The judge does that. They'll just laugh at you. You know? And I really believe that in some ways the state of Montana has been used as, being used as a test state, you know, to... to, to try their newer, improved law enforcement techniques or whatever have you. Personally, myself, I feel sorry for cops. I really do. I mean, come on, look at this. They got these uniforms on, badges, cars with lights, and all this other junk. You might as well just paint a target on them, you know? At least in Vietnam, I had camouflage fatigues. That's a little joke there, but, you know... But anyway, this is just food for thought, ladies and gentlemen. 
And that's the reason why I do what I do on my YouTube channel. I throw out a few little videos here and there, you know, but it, I, I'm not trying to make any money off the internet. YouTube, to me, is just a way where I can kind of get my, you know, I can review things. I can talk about things I'm interested in, do videos like this, even though I don't do that many videos like this and like that. But I just hope that this is food for thought. I need to have me a little coffee here. I'm being casual today. I'm not getting mad like I did in that one video ranting and raving about terrorism. But I just know one thing, you people that are doing this, that are that are that are rioting in the streets and all the stuff that you're doing, th this is not helping out this thing called terrorism. It's giving them a better foothold. If you think it all the way through. That is, if you got any brains to think with. Yep, mankind has done a good job of destroying this planet. And we're eating garbage on the cannabis. And this ain't gonna stop, neither. Yep, this ain't gonna stop. I've been watching this crap evolve, if you will, for, like I say, I'm going on 65 years old. And I figure if I can live out my life naturally, I'm gonna be dang lucky. I cry for the future generations, you know? But getting angry, you got to use your head. You got to use your God-given brains a a a instead of, you know, rampaging through the streets and carrying on a bunch of stuff because that's not going to do it. You know, that's just not going to do it. You're playing into the hands of the people that really don't care about you. Uh, God's trope, that really don't care about you. Don't care if you live or you die. I know. As a Vietnam veteran, I have felt that kind of hate. Now, that's another thing. I'm going to get ready to close off this file because I know nobody cares anyway. But I used to be a broadcaster on the Internet. And the reason why I don't broadcast very much anymore is because, because of that one word right there, hate. I found out real quick just how much hate that there is. And how many people have got hanging around on the internet and trollers and in my day I've gotten death threats and all kinds of stuff. And that's just more evidence to me on what's going on with what I call the human condition. And I've I've done some videos hit and miss on this on these subjects here, but I just thought I'd make a big long winded video, get this stuff off my chest. You know, I realize that this is, you know, there was no free flow to this video at all. I just spoke from the heart. Actually, I'm glad that I got through this video without breaking down and crying because I've tried to be totally honest there. I've, I've tried to speak my mind and like that. But you need to go out and breathe some fresh air. That is, if you got some fresh air to even breathe. You, 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 you need to, you know, get back your ruts, you know. Get yourself a healthy hobby or whatever have you. But just know that the government is not your friend. I don't care what anybody says. I, I've known this ever since Vietnam. The government is not your friend. As a matter of fact, the government, now pay attention here. The government looks at you like a liability and not an asset. If you're an asset to the government, fine. But if you're a liability, your life ain't worth spent. Now, 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 think about that. Think about that. Okay, that's all I've got to say. Actually, I've got a lot more to say. Nobody ever watches these long-winded videos. That's why I make my videos short as I can because I know that people got, people all nervous, jumped up, whatever have you. Ain't got enough time to sit down and watch a five-minute video. Have a nice day, ladies and gentlemen.